Hi, welcome to Financial Accounting. I'm glad to have you back. Today we're going to be working on the general journal. We're going to be posting transactions to a general journal. We're going to be using uh, exercise 4.2 in your text. So if you're following along from my class, you can turn to exercise 4.2. A little bit about the general journal. It has a date. Uh, it has a description. The description is where you put information about the transactions, the account not names, and also source documents. So the source documents would go here, and a source document is where you're getting your information from. Something like an invoice, or a check number, or a credit memo. And that would go there along with a good description. You always want to input a good description in your in there because after you post a lot of transactions and you go for several months you may not remember what happened someone might ask you a question if you have a good description you'll be able to answer them quickly next we have the post reference column the post reference column is used when you're posting to a general ledger we will not be posting to a general ledger in this section but we will in our next screencast so whenever you're not posting to the general ledger you want to make sure that this area remains blank you do not want to put in a posting reference if you've not posted yet. And then we have our debits and our credits. That should look familiar to you. And what we'll do is we'll debit the account if we need a debit and credit the account if we need a credit. So if we have cash and it's increasing, we'll debit it here. If we have cash and it's decreasing, we will credit it here. Some things stay the same. You always need your debits and credits to be equal. And you'll always have two accounts. So it's similar to a T account, but it, it's not as spread out. So um, we'll get started on our general journal. I'm just going to delete source documents so we can start. If you're on exercise 4.2 in your book, you'll read that it says on September... Uh, first, Marilyn James invested 62000 in cash to start the firm. So I'm going to put September there, and I only need to do it once, and then I'll put the number one below. So the first thing I need to do is think about what accounts I need. So she invested $62,000 in cash to start the firm. So I'm going to start with cash, because most students like to start with cash. It makes sense to them. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make all of these cells be justified that way. So we're going to start with cash. And if cash is increasing, does it need to be debited or credited? Yes, that's correct, debited. So I'm going to type 62,000 into the debit. Make that a little bit bigger. So we have 62,000 debit, and we'll use commas there. Now, just like we did in T accounts, we need to make sure that we have a credit. Um, whenever you create a general journal, it's best to start with your debit, that's good format, and put your credit account second. So I'm going to indent slightly. I'm going to be in the cell, and I'm going to indent it slightly there. And I'm going to use my other account. So I'm going to use uh, James, that's the woman's last name, capital. And she is going to have a $62,000 credit to the capital account. Again, let me go ahead and use commas here so it's easier for us to read. Very good. Now I'm going to make a good description for this journal entry. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type owner beginning investment. And you can go ahead and abbreviate here in the description section. There's not a lot of room. So it does help you to, uh, to be able to see. Hold on one second while I adjust my microphone. Okay, so I'm coming to the next journal entry on September 4th. Um, generally in accounting, we do not skip lines in our journal. So I'm going to come to the next line. I'm going to type the 4th. And on the 4th, we purchased office equipment for $8,500 on credit from Den Inc. We received invoice 9823, and it's payable in 30 days. So my debit account is going to be for office equipment. Office equipment is an asset. And since we're getting more office equipment, we're purchasing equipment, I'm going to come over here and debit it and make it increase. And we paid $8,000. $500 for the office equipment. 
But if we look back at the transaction, it doesn't say that we paid cash. It says we put it on credit. So we need to use the account where someone owes us money. Do you remember the name of the account that we use when someone else owes us money? Yes, we'll use accounts payable. So again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, indent slightly since it's my credit account. And I'm going to type accounts payable. And I'm going to come over here to the credit and I'm going to put in $85,000. And you can see that my debits and credits are equal. And you want to always make sure that your debits and credits are equal. So I'm going to come over to September 16th and it says I purchased an automobile that will be used to visit clients and issued check. So we're looking at September 16th and we purchased an automobile that will be used to visit clients issued check 1001 for $22,500 in full payment. So if we think about this, what we're ha what's happening is we're getting an automobile and we are paying for it in cash. Um, so if we think about cash, because students like to think about cash first, if you're writing a check, your cash should be going down, so you're crediting cash. Therefore, you're going to debit the automobile. So let's come on over here and type in the 16th and tab over, and we're going to have an automobile, and we're paying um, 22500 for the automobile and we'll come over here we'll indent and we'll type cash we'll credit cash in order to, to decrease that account for 22500 and we'll put in a good description we'll say purchase with check 1001 full payment so that when we come back we know that what's happening with the automobile and how we paid for it. If we go on to September 20th, we purchased supplies for $420. We paid immediately with check 1002. So again, we're going to debit supplies. Oh, I'll be in the right column here. We're going to debit supplies because that is an asset account and it's increasing. So it'll be 420, and we're paying for it immediately, so we're paying for it in cash. And even when you use a check, we consider that to be cash for $420. Again, a good description, payment, check, 1002. Um, on September 23rd, we realized that the supplies we purchased on the 20th were damaged, so we're going to return them. So I'm going to put on the 23rd here. Um, and there's going to be a, a difference. Instead of having more supplies, we're going to actually have less supplies. We're going to need credit supplies, and they're going to give us our cash back. So our cash is actually going to go up. So I'm going to debit cash for $120, and I'm going to credit supplies for $120. Moving on to September 30th, we issued check 1003 for $5,600 to Den Inc. as payment on account for invoice 9823. So up here we purchased something on account and now we're making a payment. Um, so on the 30th, we have to decide what account we want to debit and what account we want to credit. So up here on the 4th, we credited accounts payable and that increased the balance of the account. So now if we want to decrease the balance of accounts payable, we need to debit. So I'm going to type accounts payable and I'm going to type in a debit and we made a payment of $5,600. And when we make a payment in cash, we're going to credit cash to reduce it for $5,600. 1600 and we want to make sure that we have a good description. We're going to say um, made payment check 1003. Very good. So um, let's do one more. Let's do the next uh, journal entry that happened on the 30th here. 
it says withdrew two thousand in cash for personal expenses so in this instance we're taking cash out of the business for our own personal use and remember that we want to record what's happening in the business not what's happening to our own personal cash so we're going to use the account where we use when owners withdraw money so we're going to just say James that's her last name again drawing and I'm going to debit that account for two thousand dollars now remember that drawing is a special account it is an owner's equity account but it's a contra equity account so it acts more like an expense and it has a normal debit balance and of course whenever we're taking cash out of the business we're going to credit cash for two thousand dollars very good well, I would like to thank you for coming and, and doing some journal, general journal entries with me. I'm not going to finish exercise 4.2 because hopefully uh, it's making sense to you how to use the journal and, and you know the debits and credits from artwork in Chapter 3 with the T account. Of course, if you have any questions or you want to see the remaining um, problems, just go ahead and send me an email and I'll get right back to you. Uh, thanks, and I look forward to seeing you for the next video where we work on posting from this journal to the ledger. Thanks.